GoPro has a very special place in my heart because as cheap as they are, you can get some very high-end results with them. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a few examples of how I take my ordinary GoPro footage and turn it more like a movie. And after these examples, I'll show you the extra little chef's kiss I add to give it that extra pop on Instagram. The first example I'm gonna walk you through is this mosque clip. So as you can see, it has a lot of changing lighting conditions, which is typical for FPV. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I build out this. Let's get rid of these and let's get rid of these. Before we get started, I would just wanna mention how I set up the camera shot. So I will usually expose as bright as I can without blowing out an incredible amount. Obviously with this clip, I'm going to have to blow out the sky a little bit because my subject is in the shade. I take into account of that and I kind of plan to, to bloom the highlights to the point where it looks beautifully blown out. So I start with an adjustment layer and first thing I do is convert it. If I shot it in log, then I will convert using the GoPro Creative LUT and I'll leave it in the description below. It's, it's free. I don't know if it's from GoPro. Obviously the colors right now, are quite a bit green and I'll put that on an adjustment layer above the clip because then I can go in the clip before I convert from log and change the colors around so I can make this more natural. Maybe it's a little pink. You can adjust exposure as well. I might turn it down here. I'm gonna turn on high quality playback so that we can see the actual colors. Okay, still a little pink maybe, but we're not here to be perfect. I just wanna show you my process. So this process is really to balance it and start to give it a, a clean slate where we could build our look from. At this point in the process, you have two options. You can use LUTs and start to build the look that way, or you can start to just tweak different settings and contrasts and whatnot. In this first example, I'll show you the, the way I would build a look out without using any LUTs. And the next few, I'm gonna show you how I stack those LUTs and, and strategically place them. It is not looking contrasty enough. Contrast is one of the first things I like to adjust. The curves is a really great way to adjust that contrast. And I might as well bring up my scopes here. And that's obviously a bit much. And then I, I like to pop the midtones usually we have some decent contrast i think it's a little strong so i'm actually going to lower the overall opacity i think of it in two stages right contrast is one and then colors are the other so it's essentially lighting and exposure and color science or color coloring i'll get a rough draft of contrast and i think that's a good amount for now and then i'll just reset that, create a blank adjustment layer. And now I'm gonna start working on the colors because they're just a bit gross. What I normally will do is push yellows towards this rosy color and then blues towards this like tealy. And it just kind of makes this cool. It's like teal and orange, but a little rosier. Maybe it's a little bit more of the oranges. Yeah, okay. so. This is a good example. Yellow is usually good for, for trees and whatnot. If I if I take this to the extreme, you can see the, the trees down there start to uh, change dramatically, but it's really this moss color that I want to change. So it's actually the oranges. And maybe something around there. And that's before and that's after. So it just gives it like a little rosier glow. It could use, well, let's see, we could see if we could benefit from toning it down or up. Up makes it blow out. Maybe down adds a little bit of saturation, but I think I wanna add some saturation in it as well. So I'm looking at the main subject, right? I want that to look proper and I want your eye to actually go to the main subject, which is in this case, the mask. And your subject's gonna change throughout an FPV shot. These clouds up here are looking a little pink to me. I'm gonna to toy around with the actual adjustment or the actual layer, the actual clip color is what I mean. Some teal in the shadows and start to dive into that classic look of orange, orange and teal. 
So this is off. You see the orange in the shadows. And then on. It just takes it out just a little bit. It's all just about micro adjustments. So it's not like you want to go extreme and pump crazy colors. Oh, actually, this kind of looks cool. I added some orange to the midtones, which is really going to pop the, uh, the mosque and some of the trees down here. So maybe that's a stylistic preference, but I like it more. So I'm going to leave it and you can pop the midtones to make them a little bit glowier. Maybe that's a bit too much now. I'm going to make sure that this didn't ruin the other parts of the clip. Cause again, the lighting is always changing and I'm just going to hide this. And I, I really do like that. It adds that orange glow to the left side and even pops the sky it has like an orange haze to it. I, I prefer that. I think that looks really good. So there's actually a little bit easier of a way to do it. If you want to stack LUTs, I actually just launched a LUT pack. It has 12 total LUTs, six log and six non log counterparts specializing for FPV with GoPro or just GoPro in general. Sometimes I use them on regular footage. If you are interested in, in uh, a new LUT pack or supporting me, then it'll be in the description down below. However, if you have LUTs already, I'm going to show you how I would integrate any LUT into a workflow. Now we're working with a non-log clip and I'm going to show you exactly how I would use LUTs in a workflow. This was shot in a flat color profile. So I'm going to use the Misty Sunrise No Log. It's a great foundation. I'm going to intensify it just a little bit, and I'm going to actually up the exposure. And I don't want to go too far to make it gross looking. I'm looking at these, these blue boats here. I think that's a bit too intense. And I don't want to go too little. So I think that kind of blends in with the shadow and it just doesn't pop the subject. And now I'm going to add some contrast. I think it could really use some good, good old fashioned contrast. And then those midtones. With just a few adjustment layers, we got a great looking shot. One more thing I want to show you is something called local editing. If you're not familiar, everything we've been doing so far is global editing, which just means affecting the whole image. So I already have this shot pre-graded. And if you notice, the girls on the boat are a bit bright. You start to lose the detail on them, but the rest of the image looks great. So I don't want to affect the whole thing. And this is where masking comes in. If you're familiar with Premiere Pro or DaVinci, I'm sure you have heard of masking or have done plenty of masking. In this case, I would add a Lumetri color on the actual clip itself, just on what I want to bring down. So they're just a little bit bright, right? Let's start to tweak. Overall exposure, you want to be careful with because it just starts to make it look fake. Whereas I'm going to actually bring down the curves. This will make it look a little bit more natural. And I'm not worried about the background right now because I'm going to mask it out. And then what I want to do is add a mask right here. And I just want it to really Effect. This is this is a a pretty simple way to do it. I'm just using an oval mask, and then I'm just gonna feather the heck out of it. And that is that is I want to do it you before and after it. And what you want to do is mask path, and you want to just track them. So you just want to every once in a while make sure it's over them. And then just all the way through the clip and it kind of stays on them here. So, so this is without the mask. This is with the mask. So you can tell it just helps blend it a little bit and you can do this with skies or certain colors and you could start to tweak the, the contrast or the colors of certain parts of the image. And that can give you a really professional look. It's a little bit tougher with FPV because you're changing direction and lighting so much. But in a, in a case like this, it would be, it's perfect. For the bonus tips is to give it that little extra shine, that extra glow. All you do is highlight everything once you're done, once you got the grade that you like, nest it all. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate that, add a Gaussian blur. And my go-to settings are 15, and 15 for opacity. So I'm gonna change the opacity to 15%. I'm gonna change the Gaussian blur to 15 strength. And then I'm gonna change it to screen. 
And I think it just gives it a really nice, creamy, beautiful look. And the other thing is even more simple. And that is a matter of adding one adjustment layer. And I do this with all GoPro footage. I'll add an unsharp mask. And a lot of times I notice it when I post, but it'll keep that sharpness throughout the posting process, throughout the compression. So this is with no glow and no sharpness added. It looks pretty good. And then this is with both added. It's, it just feels a little bit more vivid, a little bit more flowy. This was a little bit into my process and how I color grade my FPV footage. If you are interested in my LUT pack, I would mean the world to me if you checked it out. I'll leave it in the description below. If not, hopefully you learned a few things and I will see you in the next one.